guys, a very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're all doing fantastic out there. So today on the video, I am going to talk about wake turbulence. What is it? Uh, how is it created? And how is it different from, diff from other types of turbulence? So I have really um, quite a few questions on this on my previous podcast. People were asking, well, if turbulence is not uh, dangerous, then why are, you know, what is wake turbulence and what, you know, is that dangerous and things like that. And the answer to that is that yes, wake turbulence can definitely be dangerous, okay. Um, I wanted to do a separate podcast on wake turbulence because it's not really the same as other types of turbulence. I also want to make a clarification to my, uh, to my previous video. Turbulence can indeed be dangerous for the aircraft structure. If you get into extreme turbulence, if you get into, for example, the core of a thunderstorm, a cumulonimbus cloud, then the updrafts and downdrafts created inside of those, uh, those clouds can indeed be so um, extreme that it can bend the aircraft structure and cause fatalities. The reason that I pointed out that turbulence in general is not very dangerous is because the extreme amount of turbulence needed in order to cause a breakup of an aircraft or aircraft structure or failure, you basically only find inside of these thunderstorms, which we do everything in our power to avoid using weather radar and so on. Very, very rare to find those types of turbulence outside of a CB. You can find um, heavy turbulence, but heavy turbulence is normally not enough to do any kind of damage to the aircraft and we avoid entering those areas of known um, heavy turbulence as well and we also descend or climb out of it as soon as we enter it. So that's why I wanted to, you know, to explain that. You are right, all of you who sent in questions saying that, well, what about inside of a CB and stuff? It's absolutely correct. However, we do everything in our power to make sure that that does never happen. So wake turbulence then, what is it? Well, wake turbulence is a different kind of animal altogether. Uh, wake turbulence is created by the aircraft when it is taking a lot of lift out of its wings. Okay, So the most wake turbulence is created during the takeoff and the landing phase. That's because the aircraft is traveling relatively slowly then, and uh, because it's traveling slowly, it needs to exert a lot of lift in order to, you know, be able to land and be able to take off safely. Normally we do that with the help of high lift devices such as slats and flaps which extend the wing surface um, and also kind of change the core um, shape of the wing in order for us to take out as much lift as possible out of the wings during those low speed uh, maneuvers. What happens then is that the aircraft when it's creating lift, it creates a high pressure on the bottom of the wing and a low pressure on the top. Okay. Whenever you have that happening in nature, the air will always try to equalize the pressure difference. So in the case of an aircraft, the air tries to escape from the bottom of the wing to the top of the wing. That's one of the reasons why we have winglets, for example, to try to skip that from happening to as much as possible, because it creates two things. It creates those vortexes that creates the um, weight turbulence and those vortexes are also a source of drag which we always try to avoid. But anyway, uh, it's impossible to avoid it completely so aircraft, all aircraft, even smaller aircraft, will have those vortexes showing. And I'll show you a picture of it here. Okay, um, what happens then is that those vortexes, if a smaller aircraft comes into the vortex behind a bigger aircraft for example, it might just be flipped over on its sides, or it might enter into a non-normal attitude, which is something that we definitely don't want, especially the low level, especially close to the ground, which will always be during the takeoff and the landing phase. So air traffic control have um, put in force ways to separate aircraft during the takeoff and the landing phase. So, for example, during the landing phase, uh, the separation will be done by increasing the number of nautical miles between the landing aircraft. Uh, it tends to be six nautical miles between a heavy and a light turbulence aircraft. It might go down to five between a heavy and a medium, or four nautical miles between a heavy and a heavy aircraft. 
During the takeoff phase, uh, they use timing instead. So, generally speaking, we tend to have about two minutes that we have to wait after a heavy aircraft is taken off. It can go up to three and also four minutes if the preceding aircraft is heavy and the following aircraft is light. So, the reason that we wait and the reason that there is a separation in between is that the wake turbulence does not stay static in the air. Okay, it falls. Uh, at an altitude, we normally count on about 400 nautical miles, sorry, 400 feet per minute, and it's probably something similar at the ground level. You can hear this actually if you're out uh, doing um, flight spotting, if you're out next to an airport, you can stand, and if an aircraft passes above you, you will find after a couple of seconds you'll hear kind of a whipping sound, and that whipping sound is actually the sound of the vortexes that's coming down. You can also feel the air moving around you. There are, some air, uh, there are some accidents that have been attributed to weight turbulence. The most famous is probably uh, the American Airlines Flight 587 that crashed outside of Queens just after September 11th. Um, that was due to the aircraft taking off, coming into wake turbulence just after takeoff. And then the actual um, cause of the crash was the inadequate or the, the over maneuvering by the flying pilots. He was exerting way too much. Um, rudder input and that was found to be the cause of the accident but the actual initiation of the accident was caused to weight turbulence. There was also a crash, a famous crash by a business jet down in Mexico City. Um, you can find uh, air crash investigation videos here on YouTube on both of these crashes. They're very interesting to watch. Anything, anyway, um, that's what I had on wake turbulence. If you have more questions about this, then feel free to send them in. As always, I'm really grateful for all of your questions, for all of your suggestions, uh, for how to improve the channel. And also, I want to send a special thank you to my patrons on Patreon. You guys are really helping me. I am now buying more material for the uh, channel to improve the sound quality and so on. I hope you're all having a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.